Hi everyone, it's Jonathan from Mars, and we're here with another ridiculous supercar. This bright orange monster is McLaren's 570S. This is part of their sports series, which is the entry level McLaren. You may remember last year we tested a bright red 650S convertible. This is that car's little brother. Okay, so there's quite a few changes between the 650 and the 570. It uses a modified version of the same carbon fiber monocell but this one's been cut away in the still, so it's a lot easier to get in and out of. And they also took some weight out, so it now weighs 75 kilos. All the body panels you see are aluminium instead of carbon fiber. Instead of the clever Formula One inspired hydraulic suspension that was connected front to rear on the previous car, this one is a more traditional thing with, it has adaptive dampers, but the suspension front and back isn't linked. So it's a slightly simpler concept, which is why this car starts at $190,000 instead of quite a lot more than that. And yet you don't really give up very much of the performance. The engine is a version of the same 3.8 litre twin turbo V8 that McLaren use in their other cars, in the 650S, the 675LT, and also the P1. This one's been tuned, you might be able to guess, for around 570 horsepower. In fact, it's 570 metric horsepower, which in our numbers works out to about 562, which is good for 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds. It'll do 0 to 100 in 6.3, I believe, and less than 10 seconds to get to 200 kilometers an hour, which is 124. Obviously, most of that performance you will need to do on a closed track. Obviously, there's a huge focus on aerodynamics, moving the air around the vehicle. You can see there are these strakes down here which feed cool air into the radiators. There's ducts on the front that channel air under the car and around the wheel wells. These little extraction bits here to suck air out so it doesn't disturb the flow, sculpted around the mirrors and then obviously around the back. Okay, so here we are at the back of the car, which, and this is purely subjective opinion, I think looks a lot better than the front. I'm not a huge fan of the styling McLaren did on the nose of this, but I think at the back, it looks amazing. You've got these you know, sculpted wheel arches shaping the air down here. You have these cool flying buttresses across the engine bay. Now it's a real shame, you can't actually see very much of the engine. You have this grill cover here, which if you peer down through, you can see like the intake plenum and stuff. But if you want access to it, you push a button and this tiny little hatch pops up, which is where you add oil and water. And anything more complicated than that, you need to take it to your McLaren dealer and they break out the Allen screws to remove these panels to get access to it. We have the gigantic rear diffuser at the back, all shown here in beautiful glossy carbon fiber. That obviously is used to channel the air from the bottom of the car. It's actually an even uh, a relatively practical car. You could get a week's luggage in here. I am pretty sure that Ron could fit in there if he just hugged his knees. Something I do quite like about this car is the McLaren badge kind of on a background of, which I'm almost positive will cost you extra if you want that on your car. So when it comes to the front styling of this car, I'm still not entirely convinced. I think there's some angles where it looks pretty good, but there's other ways that if you catch it in the right light, it has something of the air of an evil Pokemon character to it. I mean, particularly in this bright orange paint. A McLarenosaur, possibly. So Ferrari and Lamborghini and everyone else is covering their, but their steering wheels in buttons, and they're moving all the controls from here and here and here onto the wheel. McLaren have gone completely the other way, with the exception of the shift levers, which here are nice carbon fiber ones. The only button is the horn, and the wheel is quite a narrow rim. And the way they came up with the size of like the rim right here, is they took Lewis Hamilton's like hand position, the way he holds his, his F1 steering wheel, and then basically recreated that. And then they realized, because he always wears gloves in the car, they basically had to add another couple of millimeters of material to either side so it actually fits your hand properly. McLaren still uses uh, hydraulic steering instead of electromechanical, which I guess has a bit of a power drain on the engine, but you get a lot more feel through the wheel. So the fact there are no buttons on the steering wheel means to control, to move through the multifunction display, you have a little stalk on the left side of the steering wheel, which goes up and down and backwards and forwards. You get used to it, um, it's not the most intuitive control in the world. It does make having to lift the front of the car up for speed bumps a little bit of a pain because you have to like dig into this menu and then scroll down a couple of times and then pull this one and then jack it up. The 650S had a big like physical analog rev counter. Now there's a, a TFT display. In fact, there's three. You have the central one that shows you your rev counter. There's a little one on this side which you can change to be the trip computer or the navigation show up there too. And then on this side tells you your fuel 
cold water temperature and that kind of thing. The gearbox is quite clever. If you leave it in auto, it will shift quite seamlessly. This car is apparently much more economical than the 650S. I haven't seen any proof of that so far. Uh, it does have stop-start fitted, so which won't, I don't think it'll work if we're in sport mode. But The engine will theoretically cut out when you're stopped at the lights. Uh, although if it's quite hot and it needs to run the AC, that tends to turn itself back on very quickly. Launch mode, button pressed, left foot is on the brake pedal, give it full revs. And then... There you go. That was a lot more spectacular from the inside of the car, I think, than the California. This car's probably half a second quicker to to 60. So McLaren also developed their own infotainment system, which is based on Android, I think, the guts of it. Uh, they use this portrait display instead of a landscape one like most people. It's of varying degrees of goodness. There's no Android Auto or CarPlay on this. So the media browser from your phone, that works really well. The sound system is pretty great. The nav, the nav is not fantastic, I have to say. It's confusing to try and program stuff. Still, still don't think I've actually successfully managed to enter the destination. The last time we had the McLaren to test, uh, I accidentally I poked the wrong bit of the screen and it tried to direct me to the same spot round and round for about 20 minutes before we worked out how to cancel it. The 570S, it, it brings people of all walks of life together. It truly is the Pokemon Go of supercars. Poop ships, there's sister wives, FBI surveillance van. <laughs>